big men's day, I'm gonna have a big picnic, mm -hmm. and I wanted to invite some over, and I thought that the bigger thing was the was the um, the better thing. But the more I tried to push a program, God said, wait a minute. He says, you're going, I see your passion, I see your drive, but I'm gonna show you something that you aren't, aren't being able to, to see right now. And so maybe two or three people will show up for something. And maybe five or six people will show up for something right here. And then he let me have a big, big men's day, you know, or something like that. We invited um, Pastor Nevelon Meadows to our oh, church yeah. years ago. Um, and it was huge, huge. Chairs in the aisles, people in the back, people in the overflow room, phenomenal. And as many people were helped, nobody was touched. Mm. He was able to, to do some things, but the ministry in itself, men's ministry at Conan, because of the speaker, it was such, but the men's ministry of Conan wasn't flourishing. Mm. Okay. But then until I started getting into the intimate, smaller groups, having a Bible study, having a potluck, uh, with with the men, you know, having a prayer session after church, men started opening up and talking and getting things out. We had a phenomenal time up here at our at our men's con at our men's retreat um, last year mm -hmm. um, when men started talking. And I, uh, there was another man that just said, "Well, let's start introducing ourselves." One man introduced himself, "I'm from here, and I do this, that, and the other." Then somebody, else, "I'm from here, I do this, that, and the other, and I'm blah blah blah." And then after a while, people just thought, I'm glad that I came to the conference because now I learned how I can treat my wife. This is what Brownie Vanderbilt was. Uh, I learned how I can talk to my wife. I learned how I can, I can um, respect women. I learned how I can respect myself as a man. And people just started, and stuff just started coming and coming and coming. And this was a small group. Mm. This was about 15 to 18 men. Some men had gone back to their cabins. Um, some men had were walking the grounds. But this group that was there, um, and, and, and stayed for the little after thing, started talking. Man, one man went back home that night. He was touched so he went back home that night and said that you saved my marriage. Mm. Because he went home and you know, men don't, don't do this. But he said he stayed up all night long and talked to his wife. Let everything out, things that were hurting him, things that were hindering him, they talked, they, 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 they hugged, they talked some more. Um, I don't know what else they did that night, but you know, <laughs> uh, they probably healed. They healed. They healed. They healed, and then and then they, they talked some more. And he let it all out. He said it was so much better. I saw them six months later, and they're acting like newlyweds. They're running around the campground. Honey, can I get you this? Oh, you're so cute. Oh, you're so wonderful. I love it. I love you too. And let me get refresh your drink, and let me get you. You want this? Here, you have my last bite of food on the plate. And I'm sitting here like, wow, you guys are really really in love and they're dealing with the issues yes you know and it was a breakthrough you know right you know so one other question how do we stop the bleeding with the penitentiary system mm. you know how do we do that and one of the things we can do we can, we can send men to this men's conference no man left behind just just a little just a little bias um, but everything that is coming Everything that you know we're dealing with, there are some things that you know won't be addressed. And I'm just going to be honest, mm -hmm. you know, because we, I 